there is nothing wrong with your internet, do not attempt to adjust your settings. We are controlling the podcast. We control the squealing and the screams. We can make your heart flutter, your eyes blur from tears, or sharpen your mind to crystal clarity. For the next hour, sit back. We are in control of what you hear. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your setting. You are about to experience the awe and mystery known as the female mind. You are now entering the Fangirl Zone. Welcome to Sci-Fi Talk on the Fangirl Zone, a podcast where we discuss shows that used to be on the Sci-Fi channel. I'm Steve. And I'm Sean Fangirl S. And tonight we'll be discussing episode two of season five of The Expanse. Woo! Holy cow. Oh my gosh. This is awesome because we got storylines that I honestly didn't think we'd be getting. Right. So I'm like super excited about that. But yes, obviously, <laughs> yeah, we're going to jump head first in. So take it oh, away. Yeah. <laughs> All right, episode two, The Churn. Holden and Fred deal with infiltrators on Tycho. Drummer's past comes back to haunt her. Amos returns to Baltimore. And Alex and Bobby's investigation on Mars leads to rogue soldiers. Yay! Yeah. (laughs) Well, I think it's great because even though everybody in this episode has been like a major player, they haven't necessarily been like 100% in the spotlight. Right. And everybody got their time to shine in this episode. Yes. Yes. Some more than others, <laughs> which was fine with me. Yeah, I agree. But we open with Drummer verbally intimidating some pirates as they attempt to raid a stranded vessel. Huh. What? You mean Drummer could be intimidating? Oh, Shut no. your mouth. <laughs> Yeah, she is holding all the cards because out of nowhere, another ship appears and disables the pirate ship without blowing it up. So she's able to shoo them away in time to signal the UN to send aid to said stranded ship, even though that captain wasn't real happy because they took everything. Right. Hey. (laughs) Hey, you're uh, still alive. Remember, if it was Marco. Yeah. Yeah, maybe not. Or if those those pirates probably would have killed him too. Yeah. That's true. So they all celebrate with her her small crew. What is it? About five people? You know what? It seems like it keeps changing. So, yeah, I mean, it's still pretty small. We're going to say under 10. Right. (laughs) At least what we see. Let's put it that way. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Thankfully, despite the pirates swiping a few valuables, no one was spaced. Drummer muses on how the inners can only be distracted with their own turmoil for so long before they turn their gaze on the bell. Yes. No spacing, people. You don't get the inner's attention. I mean, yeah, it could definitely be worse because even though Marco and Naros is like doing horrible things, I still feel like they're not paying enough attention. No, <laughs> not at all. They're too worried about the ring gates and right. getting all their overpopulated people out of there. Right. In there. So I think drummers st- stay for a while, but I feel like it's going to be one of those things where like they can't get Marco. So they're going to come after like the smaller ones, the smaller right. fish, like drummer. Yeah, that's very possible. And then she'll, she's smart. She'll beat feet Tycho station. Right. And unfortunately have to get back in the game, so to speak. Yes. And of course, one of her crew members makes the remark that's quite intriguing. Inner tension is measured by belter corpses. And that really should be by inner corpses by <laughs> by belters. Right. And then Drummer learns that Ashford's old ship, the Tynan, has resurfaced. Oh my God, the look on her face. I know. Apparently, she's been on the hunt for the Tynan for a while. Yeah, because didn't she say, I never thought I'd see it again or something like yes. that? Yeah. yeah. So that's going to be quite emotional, I believe. So we go to Mars where Alex makes a pit stop at Bobby's apartment. And Alex once again puts his foot in his mouth. Oh my god! Bobby is just... She's not having it. No. But it's like, Bobby, jeez, I mean, yeah, he knows you're like this hero, and you're living in, I don't know, something maybe the size of a dorm? About, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> tiny. Studio. Yeah. 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 She's not a hero on Mars, that's for sure, even though she's a hero to everybody else. Right, that doesn't make sense. It still doesn't make sense to me, but... No. But man, she was snippy? Yes, and Alex 
gets to the door and she tells him to wait. And she takes him to the storage facility that houses her growing collection of black market purchases. (laughs) This still worries me that that's there. Right. Because, again, I just feel like a setup is coming. That's very possible. And he's wondering if she's going to be using that stuff. And no, 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 no. Ava Solara is funding this investigation. (laughs) And Alex kind of goes, hmm? I don't know. I kind of feel like that might end up on the Rossi. Yep. I think it might, too. And Bobby truly believes that Martian weaponry is being sold illegally to the Belters. And, of course, her murder wall projection. Yeah. I'm sorry, but that's the best crazy wall that I've seen. Yes. I mean, <laughs> no just, yarn needed. Yeah, I was like just missing <laughs> all the string. Yep. And of course, Alec recognizes one of Bobby's potential culprits as Admiral Salverte. And Alex refuses to believe that the Admiral is involved in anything illicit. Yes, because obviously, Alex, everything has been on the up and up everywhere. Right. So he decides, because Bobby cannot go up and just start chatting to him about weapons, that he would go say hi to the Admiral. And later on, we see Alex going in and listening to the Admiral's lecture. And afterwards, he asks the Admiral if he'd like to have coffee, saying that he can uh, tell him what it's like to set foot on Ellis and be one of the first through the ring gate. So you kind of get the feeling that, yeah, all this has gotten to Alex's head just a little bit. See, I thought he was just doing it as a way in based on the lecture. Right. And absolutely he was. But man, that Admiral's attitude. Oh, yeah. (laughs) He basically shoots him down, citing that Alex piloted a stolen MCR vessel under the command of an Earther. He should be treated like Bobby. It's like, dude, he is trying to give you information while, of course, mining for information at the same time. Right. But, yeah, I attitude. I'm not even going to call you Admiral. Your attitude. Yes. (laughs) And that immediately got my attention is something isn't right with this guy so i think bobby's probably right that he's the one that's doing the dealing with the belters you think so oh yeah bobby said he was in charge of all the shipments and who was working where and so yeah there's little doubt that he's trying to get his big payday so he can go jump ship and go through a ring gate and be top dog on his own planet okay see that's an interesting theory and that makes sense but the second we seen his not second in the command whoever like assistant yeah, his assistant yeah i was like oh it's her <laughs> and that could be too cuz lieutenant babbage comes forward and accepts the offer for coffee she's the assistant to the admiral and she gives alex her contact information and after alex walks away the admiral urges babbage to find out why he's on mars yeah that's just she's like i'm already on it that's that's totally the reason. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, it's her. If she's his assistant, she's probably like, I need you to sign all these, sir. And, and move people around. Yeah, I don't trust right. her. Right, yeah. Now, that, that very well could be, too. Now, we go check in on Luna, where we see Ava Solara with her daughter, Ashante, who is urging her to go back to Earth to make amends with her husband. <laughs> yeah, and that's going to not happen. Have not you met her? Let that happen. No. <laughs> She's needed too much on Luna, and daughter just doesn't understand the critical work that she's doing. Later on, we see Ava Solara in a meeting with Secretary General Gal, Admiral Delgado, and another gentleman. And of course, she's got to bring up a security issue that they should be focusing on the science ship that vanished outside of Venus, and that Marco Anaros must be behind it. She does. I guess, kind of sound like crazy if you're not in the know, which, right. because we know everything, I'm sure that Gao's just like, uh, really? Can you stop already? Yeah. <laughs> and I get that unless she's funding him, which is interesting too. Because yes. for some reason, I just had that thought like, oh, maybe she's funding him and he, she thinks he's going to attack Mars though, and he's turning it around on both of them. Right. This is what I'm thinking, but yeah, seeing Officer 
like, Marco, Marco, Marco. It's like, ugh, yeah. She does kind of sound like she's never going to let this go. And right now she doesn't have proof. But because we know everything, it's like, she has proof. Yeah. And of course, it doesn't help that Delgado doesn't step up at that point and say, yeah, there's a pretty good chance. He, no, he, just a small chance. It right. Could be a belter ship. And it's like, oh, you bum. <laughs> You're the only one that she can possibly count on, so let grow a pair here, buddy. And, of course, Gao is incredulous and dismisses her concern and basically says, you continue to focus on this, you're out of here. All yeah, right. that was just real shitty, too. It's like, oh, you don't like it? Leave. Yeah. I think at that point, Avastar is like, uh, where am I going? Because it's coming down. Right. This hammer is going to fall. Yes, it is. And it's only a matter of time, and it's probably not very long. Right. So later on, we see Avasalara and Delgado having drinks together, and she basically twists his arm into joining her on this, since uh, Gao appears to be undermining her every step of the way. Now, they must first investigate why the science ship was at Venus in the first place, then go from there. Because Avasalara is hell-bent on proving that Marco and his team made that vessel vanish. And she's right. Yeah. I mean, 100%. I really think Gao should be like, well, you know what? Maybe. Even if she's not giving it 100%, she should be thinking something might be up. But, uh, yeah. come on. No, she's focused on the ring gates. That's... <sighs> Everybody's focused on the ring gates. That's what's making me crazy. Yes. <laughs> Even belters are focused on it. Yeah. So, ah. <laughs> So, we get guess where we get to go next? We go to the Blue Marble. <laughs> Good old Baltimore. As we see Amos wandering the streets until and makes his way to an apartment door. We see a man named Charles answers, and after a brief standoff, <laughs> that poor old man's got to be shaken in his boots. Yeah, he did not look like he was happy to see Amos. His reputation but, precedes him is what I'm going to say. <laughs> that's possible, but I don't even know if he knew what Amos looked like. But apparently he did because he eventually calls him Timothy See, and lets him in. I'm thinking he didn't know, but it was the whole demeanor. Like, that's why he was freaked out at first. Right. Yeah, And then be. when he wasn't leaving, it's like, all right, nobody comes here. Nobody would, would ask about Lydia except possibly Amos slash Timothy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so we find out that he was the companion of Amos's dearly departed friend, Lydia. And Amos noticed that Charles is in the process of moving as he sees in a box a handmade coffee cup with the name Timothy on it. That was cute. Yeah. And really bad looking. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, you could tell that was a five or six year old's uh, mm -hmm. coffee cup. And the elder man notes that Lydia had always hoped. Amos would return. Shame he didn't before she passed. Well, I mean, we kind of find out why. Right. Oh, yeah. And Amos learns that Lydia had an aneurysm and died in her sleep. Peaceful way to go, at least. Yeah. And Charles is packing up because one of Lydia's mob friends, Eric, owns the apartment and he wants it back. Yeah. And that was interesting when all of a sudden Amos is like, wait, what name? Oh, yeah. okay. Stop packing. It's like, oh, okay, crap. Yeah, because... Is he going to leave a know, trail is all I'm thinking. Right, because it was a little tense up before that because... Amos is demanding to know how she died and were they in love with each other and blah, blah, you know, right. and he's just being yeah, it, demanding. Yeah, it was really weird. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought it was interesting because we've seen him earlier, like, staring at a doorway and you see a woman and a little kid and the kid's kind of bloodied up. Right. And I'm like, is this reminding him of right. how it well, was? Went, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's just like, okay, this is kind of awkward. And then it, I don't know about you, but it felt a little more awkward when Amos yes. tried to comfort Charles, it's like, yes, yeah, <laughs> like I don't know how to say it, but he was like Baymax, they're there, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, T sounds lovely. It's like, what? Yeah. You are not Amos right now. <laughs> yeah. 
because he's going to handle Eric. So later on, we see Amos track down Eric's right-hand lackey and demands the latter to give his boss a message. Amos funny. Burton <laughs> wants to talk. <laughs> because when he's punching him, the guy's like, no more, no more. And I'm like, man, you're not even bloodied up. Amos could have told yeah. me, like, <laughs> mess you up. Do you want to see the flashbacks that we all see? <laughs> yeah. And he swipes the la- lackey's gun and sends the poor man on his merry way. And then we get a shot of Amos on the stairway outside, and we see that woman and the young boy in the rain. And he's bloody again. And just kind of go, man, what the hell is going on here? Yeah, didn't he have a gun this time? Yeah. Yeah, that the, the lady takes away. And I'm like, this is really like getting to Amos. Yeah, so eventually Eric's henchman returns and tells Amos the following, Eric will see you now. Yeah, I mean, we all know Amos can take care of himself, but I will tell you, I was a little worried. Oh yeah, especially when they walk past these four guys and two of them break off and follow along behind you go oh crap Mm -hmm. but they get to this lavish penthouse and of course they find his weapon and take it and he reunites with eric pair used to be pals and they climb their way up the crime syndicate ladder together imagine that yeah and the fact that eric's like yeah amos huh you killed him for me instead of me for him and i was like wait what yeah (laughs) <laughs> Hold on. I was just like, there's a major bomb dropped on you. It's like, that's why we got you out. And I'm wondering if his hand missing was something that the original Amos did or if it was like how he was born. It just, yeah. I was kind of like, hmm, I wonder if it was like a message to everybody else who was going to like stand up against Amos, a- not our yeah, Amos, Amos, you know, yeah. Amos Burton. <laughs> yeah, it was just, it was kind of interesting. But yeah, yeah. when he's like, no, Lydia died. And Eric's like, wait, what? That's why you're here? Really? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, Eric is about as trusting of Amos as Amos is of Eric right at this point. And, of course, he offers him a drink and leaves his weapon on his desk. And Amos slides it back towards where he was sitting and basically tells him, you don't need to do this. <laughs> yeah, I was I'm not, like... The only thing I'm here is for Charlie. Well, who's Charlie? Well, Charlie's the one who was living with Lydia for the last 10 years, and he has no place to go. Oh, okay. Well, no problem. He can stay there. I was what? still worried about the drink, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's why... Amos waited until Eric took a sip before he did. <laughs> yeah, but it, I was still, I was a little shocked that he was kind of standing up for Charlie. But at the same time, it's like the way he said it, he's like, Lydia wouldn't want him living on the street. Right. And then Eric was just like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah whatever. Exactly. And of course, Eric overtly threatens to kill Amos if he ever sees him in Baltimore again. Yeah, dude, I'm pretty sure that Amos would still take you down oh on one-on-one yeah yeah with eric's army maybe not <laughs> so yeah and i love amos yeah love you too <laughs> we'll see you never well when he said love you brother or whatever i'm like wait are they really brothers right i was kind of like hmm i wonder me too and then I, I mean, it kind of sounded like Eric was there at the funeral, but of course Amos wasn't. Right. So I kind of get the feeling that maybe Lydia was Eric's birth mother. Oh, okay. And took in Amos after his mom passed, I think. But then again, after we see this next, what turned out to be a flashback, mm-hmm. I'm not sure about that now. Because we find out that, yeah, Lydia was definitely... Not mother material, let's just put it that way. As they're sitting there on the dock having a discussion about, I'll try to do my best to be a mother to you, and you have to try your best to think that I'm being a mother to you. I was really, now that you said said this, so it's like, okay, my, my thought process isn't exactly there. But after you said that maybe Eric was Lydia's, I'm thinking it's still a possibility. Right. And even when she's like, you know, I'll try to be a mother for you because 
Amos is at that point, I want to say broken. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's no doubt. The, from what I gathered was, yeah, he was sexually abused by men for years. Right. So. Until he got bigger and older and they put him into the muscle group. Yeah. So, I mean, you can still be correct. Right. And then maybe we're just not looking at it quite the same way. Right. But I also thought, and I meant to say it earlier, it was when he's like, oh, this is good. And he grabs the liquor. I thought he was going to be like, yeah, can you send a case to me or something? Yeah. You know. Just kind of nonchalant as he leaves. Yep. <laughs> but I really liked the way that they kind of had where, where we didn't know it was a past memory. Right. Yeah. That was awesome to see that the first couple of sightings of the lady and the child were, were not him seeing that. It was a flashback of his. So mm -hmm. that was pretty awesome the way they did that. And of course... His reminiscing is interrupted by a couple of youngsters attempting to get the jump on him. <laughs> and he gets up and says, no. I thought that was funny. And they got, what do you mean? And he's just like, <laughs> he just, no. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know. Do you think it was just his overall look or the way he was saying it? Or well, almost like they can smell the murdery intentions that could like, yes, flow I, off I of him? Yes, I think so. I, I think just... Because they walk up to him and they don't see him. They see him from behind. Mm -hmm. And once he gets up and turns around to face them, I don't care if it was dark or not. You see Amos in the dark? No. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, whatever. You run. Whatever, man. Old man. Whatever. And then, yeah, yeah, walk away. Like, yeah, sure. Walk away tough. And they're like, hurry up. Walk faster. <laughs> and then he gets on his pad and calls Chrissy. Oh, my God. I'm like, she's going to beat your ass. <laughs> needing her help in securing a meeting with a mysterious someone when a ship takes off behind him. At so first I thought it was else an explosion. Is he, yeah, I did too. So who else was he going to have to see? That he needs her help for. Right. I mean, personally, that was what I, I was really thinking. Huh. Who is it that he is going to start some trouble with? Right. I mean, so Abbasalar already threatened to be killed anybody in Baltimore. He was done. Right. So, but he didn't. So, <laughs> but it sure sounded like uh, whatever was going to go on with this meeting might not even be quite as nice. So, yeah. we shall I'll see. <laughs> but yeah, Baltimore. Baltimore is fascinating to see this side of Amos that we kind of knew was there, but to see it is completely awesome. Yeah, it's just interesting. And then to see how things are going to unfold with him is really like, okay, you need to get yeah. back with the crew, though. Yes, soon. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to go to Tycho Station, where Holden receives a message from Monica. <laughs> she reveals that she's certain someone else else has some proto molecule and to meet her later in person now of course this is the last thing holden needs <laughs> he's worried about naomi and he doesn't want to get involved but he can't help himself and he does right now i do want to say really quick we have the one belter worker on on the ship well we have right. a couple but she's like yeah maybe you should go back to your fancy room and take a nap or something i'm i was kind of worried <laughs> about her it's like why is she right what are you doing to, to, to rossi that yeah you don't want him knowing about yeah i was definitely like hmm that that yeah. was just kind of you know like waving a flag at me like hey pay attention to this just in case right. Just in case, yeah, I'm afraid there's not a single soul on Tycho that I think any of us can trust right now. Right. I don't trust anybody anywhere at this point. Uh, no. <laughs> so, of course, when he arrives at Monica's room, he notices that the door is open and is in total disarray with blood smeared on the wall. I of didn't notice he... blood on the wall. How did I miss that? <laughs> I just yeah. noticed, like, the, the whole fight, obviously. Right, yeah, the, all the damage. Damage, but yeah, right there on the wall that he passes as he gets close to her bed, you see it there on that corner. Oh, I didn't even pay attention. 
<laughs> so, of course, Holden tries to get a hold of Monica's phone and ends up hearing it, finding it under the bed. Really not good. So, of course, he calls Fred Johnson and tells them they have a problem. Later on, we see Monica is alive, at least, but hanging upside down in a shipping container. This can't be good. No. And I'm like, okay, great. What's going on? Is she going to be able to get out? And, it, and then as everything starts to unfold, I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. Yes. <laughs> Holden tells Johnson what has transpired, and he insists that it's not a coincidence that Monica was attacked after she revealed what she knew of the proto molecule in a bar with a bunch of belters there. <laughs> Somebody is trying to silence her, and it's an inside job. It does seem that way. Yes, it does. Later on, we have Holden Johnson and Bull discover that Monica's camera, I guess it is, or something, is actually recording her surrounding. It's her eye camera. Of course it is. And I love that it happened, and I kind of felt like Holden was going to be like, this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, How the hell is this happening? You're off the record. Yeah, look at her. Yeah, and they see that she's inside some kind of container, but where? And we see Monica wriggles free of her wrist restraints and uses a metal bar to free her feet. And then she takes that bar and tries to use her feet to pry open the doors. Unfortunately, that doesn't work out. Instead, it punctures a hole in the door, and it's only a matter of time before she loses oxygen. Oh my gosh. I mean, she had to think, okay, I'm on a station. This doesn't seem like a room. I right. could totally be screwed here. Yeah. And we get a wide shot of inside Tycho Station with all the thousands of containers inside. It's just as bad as on a dock. So yes. I was just thinking she is so screwed. Yes, she is. <laughs> and later on, Holden and Bull don suits and head over to the shipping containers to try to retrieve Monica as they figured out that it's got to have atmosphere in it. That's what they went looking for. And of course, the first container they head to and get into is a bus. It only held soil, which helped create the atmosphere. Yeah, I was totally thinking, oh God, they're going to just open it or she's going to get that door open and it's going to be bad. Yes. And we cut back to Monica and we see it's getting worse and worse as she's in the red in oxygen. So I thought we... it was going to be done for her. Oh, I, I did too. I was afraid we had already lost Anna Banana after two episodes. Yeah. No, don't you kill her yet. But thankfully, they find Monica in the nick of time. And even though she probably was about as close to dead as dead can be, Holden injected her oxygenated blood into her veins. So she's alive now. <laughs> Because she was looking awful blue there when he uh, <laughs> stuck that in her neck, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh, don't worry. The medical people are on the way. It's like, <laughs> Yeah. At least you can breathe. So that's a bonus. Yeah. So we got a bunch of trouble on Tycho. We have no idea what Naomi's getting herself into. We got Bobby and Alex getting into something that they may or may not be able to get themselves out of. Yeah, that's very dangerous. And we still don't know who Amos needs to talk to, so... <laughs> and now I find it interesting. Tycho has somebody on the inside, and I keep looking at, like, the security guy, like, mm-hmm, it's probably you. Right, or the engineer, or it could be anybody. Now, fortunately, and what was weird was... Johnson saying, oh, well, I've locked the station down. Well, you must have locked it down right after Naomi left then. <laughs> well, not just that. It's like, okay, you locked it down, but if they're able to like get rid of the security footage, and that's probably a lot of cameras... Yeah. And nobody's seen Monica being taken. And this is a lot. And I don't think a lockdown would really stop them. No, we're dealing with professionals here. Right. <laughs> so Johnson better uh, get his uh, military P's and Q's together with Bull and Holden and be ready for anything. I'm stressed out already. <laughs> I know. Amazing start to this season. That's for sure. <sighs> okay, and everybody can relax your shoulders yeah, now. Yeah, take a deep breath. <laughs> uh, we do have some feedback from our friend Fred from the Netherlands. So let's see what he thinks of this episode. 
This is Fred from the Netherlands with some feedback for The Expanse Season 5, Episode 2. I just watched Episode 2 and I'm recording this little feedback before I'm going to watch Episode 3. Because of the release of the first three episodes at once, that's of course possible. But my feedback for the first episode was already four days ago. I read an article about The Expanse in a Dutch newspaper where they announced that it would be quite different from the previous four seasons and that all the the lead characters will go on their own path and it's more slowly and more character building and giving more a background of every character. Well, and if you see this episode, that is surely true. I really wonder if they keep that up in the rest of the season. I really have the impression that they won't because the fans of course like the interaction between these characters and if they are all on their own path uh, you won't get that or just a little bit. So I have the impression this is just building up to something. I was really afraid losing Monica, Monica Stewart, but she obviously did just survive. I also wonder if this Ashanti, the daughter of Avazarla and Arjun, will play a role further on in the series. It's actually an actress I know from the Canadian series Ransom, and but there she had a lead role. That's a series about a organization that mediates in abduction situations. It was quite a nice series. I watched it because one of my favorite Canadian actresses, Natalie Brown, was in the third season of that uh, series. I have the impression that Amos took over James's position as having uh, a lot of personal difficulties. James is quite stable at the moment, I think. And I really wonder if this brother is really his biological brother or that he just calls him like that. We have the impression when he walks around Baltimore he sees a woman and a beat up child that reminds him of his own youth but afterwards we realize that it's actually a kind of flashback he sees there and we don't see any brother in these flashbacks. Actually I don't think it is brother because otherwise he would speak about our mother instead of Lydia. Love the role of Charles, Lydia's partner for the last 10 years. It's uh, the actor Frankie Faison, who I know from Luke Cage and also from Banshee. Okay, that was all for now. Greetings, all the best. Till next time, Fred from the Netherlands. Well, Fred, interesting that you read that Dutch article about the expanse and it being a different season than any that we've seen before with everybody kind of being separated. I feel like we've kind of had that, though, unless I'm just mixing up all of our shows with everybody (laughs) having their own storyline. Or I don't know, maybe it's more because I see everybody with their own storylines. Right. Yeah. You know, and it's like, even though they're together, they're separate. Right. Yeah. Because I mean, last season we had Amos and Holden on Illis while Naomi and Alex were up in the Rossi, so they're separated, even though they're together, and Bobby was on Mars, so she was really separated. So, yeah, I I kind of agree with you, Fred. I hope it doesn't last too long, but I don't know. <laughs> it's really hard to tell wh- exactly where we're going with this right now, because we know there's... Nothing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we know there's something about bad about to happen very soon, so that's about all we know for sure right now. And yeah, I think we were both glad to see that Monica survived. We both love Anna Banana like you do. <laughs> of course, we're happy she made it. That was yeah. a little, uh, like, tense when it yes. was all happening. <laughs> very. <laughs> now, will Ava Solara's daughter play a bigger role this season? I don't know. That would be an interesting twist to get some of Ava Solara's, can't really say backstory, but at least the family inner workings. I mean, we we know she and her husband haven't communicated much here so, since she went to Luna, so who knows? And mm-hmm. yeah, we that's, debated well, whether... That's interesting, though, Steve. Right, yeah. If, if they're just sprinkling her daughter in almost as a red herring. Right, it could or be. Or to, like, show her human side. Right. See I mean, some, it's, another it's, side of her that we never get to see because she's right. always in charge. And hmm. That would now, be interesting. Now I'm starting to wonder. It's like, hmm, what are you doing? I feel like Scooby-Doo. That's just a red herring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we couldn't decide... For sure, what Eric's 
background was, if they were just two kids that grew up being best buds, or if maybe Eric was Lydia's child or or what. <laughs> still don't I'm know. I'm still torn. Yeah, I am too. I'm not sure which way that's going to play out. And of course, we always love it when you give us references to other Canadian series as Frankie was on one that you enjoyed. So we keep those up. Those are always great to know because we don't get Canadian TV down here. (laughs) Yeah, no, we don't. We might be able to, but who knows which channel or streaming service we can find it on. Right. And as always, Fred, we really appreciate your feedback and looking forward to hearing from you again. Thanks, Fred. And we have some more feedback. We do. We have Miss Christina weighing in on episode two. Take it away, Miss Christina. Hey, Sean and Steve. It's Christina. Are you as excited as I am about this season coming out? Season five. You've gotten through episode one. I enjoyed that podcast so much. And you're moving on to episode two. I'm not going to pretend I haven't seen already up to episode four. But I won't spoil anything for you guys. But man, do you have so much to look forward to. Nemesis Games is one of my, okay, it is my favorite book out of the entire series. Tideman's Wrath is really high up there with it. But this one definitely takes the cake for me. I love this story so much. We're going to get so much good content this season. And we're going to finally know who the Rossi crew are as people, where they came from before they became a family. And we've been getting a little bit of that through Alex and Holden, and then kind of some trickling for Amos and Naomi. And I feel like this book definitely imploded that in a lot of ways. I'll talk about the churn since we haven't gotten further with uh, Naomi's story thus far. But man, I really like how they were playing out later. Lydia and young Amos in the background of him recalling those memories and you did not realize until the scene at the end when they were at the pier maybe others realized earlier I had an inkling just because I've read the churn but I still like the way in which it played out it was very poetic in a sense I squealed when I saw Eric I love Eric so much I can't wait for you to learn a little bit more about these newer characters characters that are introduced this year because what the expanse does wonderfully is they give you a lot of characters to love and enjoy and then mourn when they die r.i.p ashford (laughs) but they also introduce more characters for you to love and get to know and add a different complexity to the characters that you already know and enjoy eric will definitely do that this year in this episode we definitely get some additional characters we got bull that you're going to get to know the Sakai you're going to get to know a lot of different components moving across the board that will really start to enrich the world building what I also wanted to bring up really quickly was in the first episode of Holden saying that the proto molecule changed his brain and now he will never be the same I think that's such a profound statement and rather understated because everything he discussed with Fred in his office is rather not an immediate need almost as if it is speculation and then you have this immediate need of there's a mole on the station Monica's missing what's going on we have to save her there's this larger conspiracy going around so much little things leading up to other things that that whole thing about the proto molecule and maybe we're waking someone up seems to have been pushed under the rug for right now but I think it is definitely something to keep in mind two really big things that Holden revealed in that scene what he thinks is going on about his concern around these ring gates despite the fact that everyone including Holden and his crew have been using them so that's all I got I cannot wait for you to get to episodes three and four I will definitely be with you guys all season. Can't wait to experience it through your eyes. Until next time, Christina out. Well, Christina, I am really excited that this season is based on one of your favorite books in the whole 
compilation of books because <laughs> and yeah, all it, the giant books yeah <laughs> yeah and we definitely seem to be getting more of the crew's backstory which is exciting because we get to delve into their personalities more than we've seen before so that's always good i kind of feel like we're getting not just more of the before but like how they've changed and how some of them have changed for the better right oh absolutely and yeah we also thought that the lydia and amos flashbacks were done amazingly well yeah i mean i i totally thought it was happening right then he was just seeing it and like relating so right i mean obviously that's why i said that earlier but uh yeah i thought that was really well done i do think it's interesting though that you said that what holden said about his brain being changed and never being the same and everything he said to fred johnson was actually big reveals about the the ring gates and the ring worlds and everything oh wait okay ring worlds is a whole different book but yeah whatever (laughs) but um that it's like a big reveal which not reading the book it's really got me thinking huh what does she mean what could that possibly be hinting at more than just what we're seeing yeah so now i'm intrigued christina oh yeah she's definitely good <laughs> at giving us just enough to get us even more excited than we already are <laughs> <laughs> Well, we have a whole season to go through, Christina, so prepare your non-spoilery reviews for us, because we're super excited. Oh, yes, we are. And as always, we love hearing from you, and so glad you're back with us for season five. Thank you, thank you. We'll talk to you episode three. And everyone, don't forget to rate and review us on iTunes and every other platform you find us on because good ratings and reviews help other fans of the show find us. Make sure you tell your friends not just about our show, but about the show because, oh my gosh, it's so awesome. And you know you want to talk to somebody about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And we want your feedback, too, so we can read it on air or listen to it if you want to do audio. We totally love talking to our fans and answering questions and getting information that we didn't have before. So you yes. can shoot us an email at contact us at fangirlzone.com or you can head over to www.fangirlzone.com and check out our contacts page. That's pretty simple. Find us and we're all over the place on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and YouTube and, of course, the website. And we are super excited that this is back and, oh my gosh, what's going to happen next? That's what I have to say. What? Yes. <laughs> and for this episode of The Expanse on Sci-Fi Talk, I am Sean fangirl And I'm Steve. Yeah, that's just me being in the wrong place at the right time. And until next time. <laughs>